Hello, and thanks for joining us today on CN Live, the show for gun nuts by gun nuts. And I'm host Coleon Noir, and it's good to be back. Our first guest today is former professional fighter, former Army Ranger, and all around badass, Mr. Tim Kennedy. <laughs> What's going on, man? Having a good day. Yeah, I can imagine. So, <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were being bodied by my producer. Who's like all of like five foot two and um, yeah. yeah, at Chacho, man. So, I mean, that, 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 that really made my day. I'm not going to lie to you. It was kind of fun to watch you get bodied by my producer. Yeah, I mean, like, all I wanted to do was say hi. That's all I wanted. And then she's like, wait, wait, I'm sorry. No, he's, he's far too important for you to talk to right now. So you just need to scoot along. Can you just get, 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 get. And off I went. So, so that people don't run off and think I'm this prima donna who who just doesn't like to be messed or bothered with when he's in his realm. I was I was basically cramming for my next show during Shot Show, and then I, I kindly told my producer, I was like, "All right, so I'm going to sit here in the in the middle of everything, and 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 act like I'm busy so that people don't come up to me, um, so I can hurry up and get ready for the show." And then, of course, Tim Kennedy shows up and. Yeah. Wow. I mean, wow. I'm just like a, you know, a 240 pound trained killer, <laughs> professional fighter. And, uh, and, and I have this little tiny little, <laughs> she like full redheaded. Um, cause it's kind of like a dirty redhead. And she's like, no, you got two options. One of which is me ending you. And the other one is you moving on. It was like, yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll just say, Hey, later. That's exactly how it happened. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> and she just, she just asked me, did he just call me dirty? <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> so, so let's so, all right. So let's talk. Um, let's start. Let's start with the military background. What 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 made you decide to join the army at the very beginning? Like, what was the motivation behind it? Man, I was a douchebag. <laughs> like, I was just a bad, bad, bad human. Really? Um, no, seriously. I, so I was I was in grad school, uh -huh. and um, I was a professional athlete. I wrestled in college. You know, and, God, and I you was were like, a douchebag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. I, people think I'm joking, like I'm being self-deprecating yeah. in like a fake, humble way. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. To, to garner like, sympathy. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have we don't have sympathy for train killers though. No. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I was like, one weekend I'm I'm fighting. I'm like ranked top ten in the world, and I'm worried about what pants I'm going to wear to the next party, and like what girl I'm you know, like all the stupid yeah. stuff that a 22 year old does, and. Uh, then I watched some planes fly into a building, you know, and, and, you know, it's not like I had this existential moment where yeah. I was like, oh man, I got to do something bigger and greater than myself. All I, what, all I saw was I'm just a nasty waste of space that needs to do something. Uh, so I walked into the recruiter's office and I said, I want to be a Navy SEAL special forces green beret <laughs> sniper. And the guy laughed at me. So yeah. No, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, though. I mean, there's there's got to be something. There must have been something to you to have that level of self-actualization at that age, though. Um, as much of a douche as you may have been or perceived yourself to be. I mean, come on. Not, not many 22-year-olds are literally, especially considering in the realm that you were in, you know, the, just that lifestyle. I know about that lifestyle very, you know, to a degree. Um, but, you know, just at that point, I mean, what, what, what was it in your background that you think that have, that, that, that allowed you to have that level of self-understanding? I have um, everybody around me. I had no excuse to be a uh, a piece of shit. Yeah. My my dad's amazing. My brother's amazing. My sister's amazing. My uncles were amazing. My grandpas were amazing. You know, World War II, Vietnam. Every, everywhere I looked, there was amazing. And me being a second born middle child yeah. with uh, every single gift. You know, com coming from a family that you know I I, I could have anything I wanted. Um, you know, I, I had no recourse. I had no repercussions for anything that I was doing at that time. Yeah. Uh, but I had every opportunity to be something more than I was. So all, all the ground was set. The, the table was set. The, the ground was fertile. Just something needed to change. And, uh, and that started the course, the genesis of, of my military career. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and so like, what, what, was there any point when you started that you were like, okay, maybe I might have made a mistake? Or was it just, it was full blown, like, I know I made the right decision at this point, no regrets, nothing at all? Now, I, was, I was a hard charger. You know, yeah. I, I wanted to be gr honor graduate every school I went to, from sniper school to, you know, the CQB schools to 
everywhere, you know, like the special forces qualifying course, ranger school, um, you know, as honor grad and every, every school that I went to with that said, there were times where I was like, God, this was a really bad idea. And I was trying to figure out the, like, you're a really smart guy. And had I been as smart as you, I could have probably figured out a ways to quit, but I'm too stupid and too slow to do that. Um, like for example, when I was in ranger school, it was in the middle of winter, the ground was frozen and we were doing an ambush and I was like shaking as I was on the ground and yeah. like my, my tiny little frozen penis was just pounding <laughs> on the ground. And, and I saw this guy next to me, he just stood up and he walked down onto the road. He said, I voluntarily withdraw. And I was like, oh my God, that guy's a genius. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm trying to stand up to get my stuff to yeah. like walk down to the road and he's probably drinking hot coffee and he has a cup of soup. But I, I missed my chance, yeah. you know, because I was too stupid and I was too slow. And the next thing I knew, I was back in the ambush line and I was running out of truck screaming like, Rangers lead the way. But I was still, again, too stupid and too slow. But do you regret it? No, no, nah, I don't I regret don't. a th- nah. single thing. Yeah, man, there's something about that. You know, it's it's I envy it in a lot of ways. Um, Cause like like you said, you know, you gave me too much credit and says I was probably too smart. I I would have figured some way to come out of it, maybe. But then I'd have to wake up the next day and deal with that, right? You know, I'm, I'm at that point I was a quitter. I, and for me, I my mom, you don't, you don't stop, <laughs> um, and, and you just don't. It's just the way I was raised and the way I, you know, and the way that I kind of approach life in that sense. Um, now, with with respect to martial arts, what, what, was that kind of a somewhat like was that happening at the same time? Your interest being peaked in martial arts, or was that something that uh, predated the military service or the? Yeah, I mean, the everything was kind of happening concurrently with me. I started martial arts when I was young. Yeah, uh, I started shooting when I was young, and so by the time. I was in special forces when I was going to ranger school, when I was going to sniper school. You know, I was already a black belt in a couple of different martial arts. I'd already fought professionally. You know, I was obviously as an athlete in college. Um, so, though, you know, everything was happening kind of concurrently, and that's where a lot of the anomalies were taking place is yeah. you had a really, really elite level athlete, elite level fighter, elite level shooter that was in elite units on the military. Um, where I thought I would be special, but I wasn't because everybody was just as capable of an athlete, just as fast as a shooter, just as accurate of a shooter, yeah. um, and obviously way smarter. So, um, you know, it was, it was just trying not to drown on a daily basis in the, in, in the mistakes that I was making, you know, would have filled a swimming pool. Yeah, but nonetheless, you still excel. At times, you yeah. know, when, when, my, when my bosses weren't like, beating me bloody and dragging yeah. me through the street or saying, get back on the truck. You know, no, you can't get on this helicopter mission. Um, go, go shave the back of your hands. You ape. Wow. <laughs> that, that is a verbatim sentence. I've been told numerous times and I don't even have hands. I was going to ask you. I was like, I was like, no, dude, look, like what, are you, what are you struggling with over there? dude? <laughs> I, I know this. I know this one girl. If, if you want her number, she could probably help you with that. I'd appreciate it. I yeah. mean, as long as she has like trimmers, maybe even a yeah. chainsaw. <laughs> You know, I don't really talk about my extensive background in martial arts. You know, I like to keep things kind of secret scroll level, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I do remember oh. I, I remember vividly um, getting ready to do what I need to do to get my yellow belt. Um, those were really trying times in my life, you know. Um, so I remember walking out of that daycare and um, thinking to myself, yeah, this probably isn't for me. Um, but, <laughs> I do have had a yellow belt, so no, no throwing stones. Now, the, now the thing about it too. So I'm not gonna lie to you. There was a certain point where, um, and the, and the gun thing for me at this time hadn't really kicked off as much. And but I did, I did try to walk back into that world of martial arts. And it was only then, as I was older and I started to look at it from a um, a more analytical perspective, I realized, you know. Holy crap! There's there's a certain aspect. There's certain fighting styles that are really legitimately art, just art in a sense. Um, I, I, and I was like, I'm watching. I'm, I'm at the class. I'm at the course. I'm like, you know, this is really cool. You know, they're doing great things, but I don't see how applicable this is to real life. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people m- misunderstand that component of the practicality that comes with learning how to fight versus the uh, whole concept of um, the art in in certain martial art forms. Um, what, what what was the initial form that you started with, and then at, at what point did you realize I needed to go more practical, or was it always practical to begin with? Uh, no, you know, I, I started with like kids martial arts. You know, I was like yeah. in karate. You know, like I saw a Karate Kid, and I was yeah. like, 
you know, if done correctly, yeah. it cannot be conquered. It cannot be, <laughs> um, you know, no one could defeat the crane kick. And then from there, you know, like I think I went to Taekwondo and yeah. then from Taekwondo, um, I met jujitsu and I fell in love with jujitsu, you know, Japanese jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, Hawaiian Kempo, and a lot more practical martial arts, uh, you know, but you really hit the net, the, the nail on the head that there are a lot of different styles of martial arts. Some of them are very practical in a self-defense way, in a yeah. combative way. Um, and some of them are very beautiful, like dancing. Um, but I even think that some of those beautiful forms that are like dancing, even dancing itself, mm-hmm. translate and so, complement a lot of the different things that we do, even as shooters. The breath control, the body awareness, um, you know, the slow, smooth, smooth is fast. It's the exact same thing yeah. in, in whether you're working through your forms of a kata, and I haven't done a kata in 20 years, <laughs> but that stuff definitely, I think, can complement. With that said, there's nothing like learning how to throw a hard jab and a hard cross with a headbutt and a knee to the groin. You know, yeah. like, that, that's better a little bit. That, you know, yeah. I get it. <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's, you know, I look at someone like you, and I, I would like to think that you're, you're the ideal, in a sense, for a lot of shooters, right? So I, I tend to funnel everything through this, this, this lens of shooting. Right. And um, especially when we start good talking. Lens. Huh? Yeah. Right. Good lens. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the lens. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I'm wearing an amosexual shirt. Um, <laughs> but there's always there's always going to feel that that there's I, and I've, I've encountered this with a lot of shooters, especially ones who really get into shooting and, and get into the self-defense aspect of it. The, the the more hand-to-hand combat aspect of it, there's a certain insecurity that some of those guys have with respect to that because they don't put as much attention or focus on that side of things as well. Um, how much of that do you see on, uh, from your, from your point of view within the shooting world and uh, vice versa time. in the, the hand to hand combat world? Oh man. Like one, one of the things that irks me, I mean, pe- pe- I, I, I sometimes just want to list my credentials so people can understand that w- when I'm saying things that you could not maybe find somebody on the planet yeah. that has more experience in this, you know, from, <laughs> Countless tours in Iraq, countless tours in Afghanistan, count, countless tours to Europe, Africa, South America, counter, counter poaching, counter drug, piracy. And like I've been doing this for 15 years. Yeah. I've been a martial artist for 30 years. And when I hear somebody that goes, man, man, that's really great, all that like kung fu stuff that you do, you know, but I'm always packing. And I was like, yeah, bro, I'm, <laughs> I'm always pack, I'm always packing too. That doesn't change things. Like the, yeah. the, the, the when you boil everything down. It comes to a chassis, and that chassis should – you can add tools to it or you can take them away. But the modality of, of lethality is it doesn't matter what's in my hands. I'm going to close the distance with the enemy, and I'm going to destroy it. Yeah. Whether that's a paper target, that's a steel target, that's at a competition, whether it's three gun or NRA. You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to close distance with that target, and I'm going to destroy it. Um, and it doesn't matter what's in my hands. I'm going to be the best I can with what's in my hands and whatever that tool is. I'm going to become proficient with that tool. You give me a knife, you're dead. You give me a gun, a pistol, you're dead. You give me a a rifle, whether it's a carbine or a long gun, you know, like you're going to have a rough fight regardless. So I think that answer of, oh man, I'm always packing or it's a good thing I can shoot. That's the lazy answer. You know, you, but before we went on, you're telling me like, Hey man, I get on the range. I'm doing range cardio where you're running up and and down the range. How many people do that that are listening to this right now? 1%, maybe less. But that's exactly the answer. That's the response that it should be like, man, I'm just trying to be a better shooter. Well, how do you get better? You've got to put in the work. No, you're right. You're absolutely right, man. And I, I remember those. (laughs) I I hate those days. When when those days come, it's like, oh, it's it's range cardio day. And I'm like, damn, you know, but nonetheless, they suck. It is. Yeah, they do. A lot, <laughs> but but like you said, I mean, you you got to do what you have to do. Um, so we're gonna take a quick break, real quick, and then when we come back, we're gonna talk about life outside of the ring, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna throw you right back in the ring and talk about that too. So, yeah, we'll be back. 